Before we discuss the workings of the electron microscope, let's actually define what an electron is. So one very common way to visualize an electron is to see the electron as if it was some type of subatomic entity that carries a certain quantity of electric charge and which has a certain amount of mass. Now, although electrons have never actually been seen directly, the properties of electrons have been observed experimentally. In fact, we can define electrons using the properties that have been observed experimentally. Now, for a very long time, electrons were seen as if they were particles, as if they were solid spheres that carry a mass that equals to 9.11 times 10 to negative 31 kilograms and which carry a quantity of charge given by negative 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs. However, in the year 1923, Louis de Broglie proposed that electrons act as waves or electron act as particles. And this was basically confirmed experimentally in 1927. Now, this dual nature of electrons basically led to many important applications in physics and engineering. And one of these applications is the electron microscope. Now, recall that microscopes basically magnify images to the size of the wavelength that that particular microscope uses. Now, since compound microscope uses visible light to produce images, that implies that the maximum resolution of a compound microscope is about the size of the wavelength of visible light, and that's equal to about 600 nanometers. However, the discovery that electrons can act as waves or electrons can act as particles meant that now electrons can be used as light sources to produce images with a maximum resolution of about the size of the wavelength of an electron and the wavelength of an electron is about 6 picometers, so it's much, much smaller than the wavelength of visible light. And that basically means electron microscopes can magnify objects much more greatly than those compound microscopes. So now, let's actually examine how an electron microscope works. So this is our simplified diagram of our electron microscope. Now, generally speaking, there are two two types of electron microscopes. We have scanning electron microscopes and transmission electron microscopes. So they basically use the same exact principle that will be outlined in the following paragraph. So, an electron source, as shown in the following diagram, basically emits and accelerates electrons, and those electrons travel through the following vacuum that is found within the tube of our electron microscope. Now, the electrons are forced into narrow beams by electromagnetic coils, as shown by the following two coils, and that's because we know electrons have a negative quantity of charge, so they will be affected by these electromagnetic coils. Now, the electrons eventually reach the specimen that we are examining and scatter at different angles as a result of the fact that the specimen is composed of material that has varying densities. Finally, the electrons are basically collected on a screen as shown by the following purple region and that screen can be visualized using some type of computer monitor.